today. This is Pastor Kenneth Young of Gethsemane Fellowship Ministries. The message you're about to hear today is a blessed message and is going to encourage your heart. If after hearing this message, you'd like to purchase it in its entirety, you can call me at 866-635-5505. Let's now go live into that service. This message is going to bless and encourage your life. So the familiar portion of the scripture, but perhaps a little deeper than you've heard it before, as it is at least for me, found in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Uh, be careful, at least you run over these verses too quickly. <clears throat> and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to have ex excellence in my life? Strive for spiritual excellence and pursue it. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, what is written in the law? Read us thou. And the answer the judge, the lawyer gave him says, I know it. He says, I shall and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto the lawyer, gee, you answered right. Do this and you shall live. But because he was a smart aleck and really wasn't sincere, he then challenged Jesus and said, well, who then is my neighbor anyway? And Jesus answered and said to him, let me teach you through a parable. A certain man went down to Jerusalem and to Jericho. Somebody shout Jericho. Yeah. And was, fell among thieves and they stripped him, beat him down, took his raiment. Sounds like a place you know, right? And a dark place and deprived him, robbed him, and then left him there to die. By chance, one came down, the religious priest, saw him and crossed to the other side of the road to ignore him. The Levite, a religious person of knowledge, saw him and passed, looked on him and passed to the other side. You know how they do it sometimes, brothers, amen. Walk to the other side. Y'all don't know nothing about that? You would watch some of them other people when you walk on the side of the street, they start holding their purse. Just because you fit a racial profile. Amen, brothers. Amen. Maybe it don't happen to you. It do happen to me. Maybe I just look like that. And when they went to him, they bound him up. Uh, and then the Samaritan, somebody said, but the Samaritan. A Samaritan, a half-breed, a low-class person in their estimation, when he saw him, he saw him, looked at him, had compassion for him, went to him, and poured, bound up his wounds, and poured oil and wine, and then put him on his own donkey, and brought him to an inn so he could be taken care of. And then he said before he left the inn, he said, listen, when this man gets better, whatever charges he had, put him on my account, and I'll come and repay you once I came by here. And Jesus said, which one do you think is the neighbor to this man that fell among the thieves? And he said, surely the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to the lawyer, as he says to us, then you go, my brothers and sisters, and do likewise. Some might say a picture of spiritual excellence and stewardship that serves others for the glory of God. Some might say go and do likewise. Father God, in the, as we bow our heads in prayer, I pray, Father, that flesh would get out of the way that your Holy Spirit might have his way. I pray, God, that you would help this humble preacher in this moment, this hour, to be able to share with your men and women of God the encouragement that you should encourage with me. I pray that someone here today doesn't know the Jesus Christ of the Nazareth who died on the cross for their sin. They would not leave this place unsaved as they came, but would give their hearts to Jesus Christ and be changed and healed from the brokenness of their lives. I pray that the backslider would come home. I pray that the believers would be encouraged. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that the people of God might hear the call and the pursuit of spiritual excellence. And me and them would rise together and be better in the end, than we've, in the future than we've been in our past. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You might be seated. Somebody said, Spiritual excellence, a picture for you and I. D Dr. King, in his excellent book on strength to love, remarks about this parable of the Good Samaritan, and he says, imagine that the first question that the priests and Levites asked, Dr. King says, they asked if I should stop and help this man, what would happen to me? But by his very nature of his concern, the Good Samaritan revised the question and asked, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? Helen Keller, the blind woman who had more sight than most people that see. Helen Keller, a woman of spiritual excellence and virtue, 
of service to others, writes these words. She says, there is no better way, and we're talking about the, talking about the Good Samaritan, she writes, there's no better way to thank God for your sight than to help other people who are living in the dark. And walking with a friend in the dark times of their life is better than the walk of light by yourself. Helen Keller says that, listen, the worst sight is not to lose one's sight, but the worst sight is people who can see but can't see the hurt of others. This particular text reminds us of that fact, that the spiritual excellence is more than just how much we put in the basket. It's not a mathematical precision of how much our 10% is, but it's actually a purity of heart that drives us to do better than we did before. The text of this particular text is powerful. It's more than just a missionary story, my brothers and my sisters. And it has your name on it and mine. It has the potential to be able to change our lives if we would be closer, cautious enough to be able to say to ourselves that this text has a word for you and me. Somebody said, God wants to speak to me through this good Samaritan. The sad and painful truth is that oftentimes on this experience of the Good Samaritan, we can look at a picture of the African-American experience in the inner cities of our lives. Too often we have to walk across the street when we see people who are beaten down and have been beaten up because we just don't know what their story really is. And yet there are oftentimes times that people are beaten up and left on the broken side of the Jericho roads of the inner city because they have been robbed, they have been abused, they have been misused, they have been shattered and battered by other people. And the sad problem is that there's so much crime in our communities that we are normalizing the Jericho roads of broken people. And we walk silently back in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our churches. We walk like the Pharisee did. We walk like the priest did and the Levitical person did. We walk by people who are hurting and we yet claim ourselves to be this righteous people of God that we cannot see the hurts of other people. Well, I stop by to tell you today that excellence in the spirit realm is not only the money and not only what we do in church but what we do in evangelism and outreach to the downcast and the beat down and to those people who we have no way of getting anything back from them but yet we like the good Samaritan pour our lives into them that they might be better after meeting us than they were when we first looked down at them. Too often people in their lives have been beaten down on Jericho rolls of battering and abuse, of domestic abuse, of drug and alcohol abuse, and somebody who has a dysfunctional family that never really got the opportunities to live the life of prosperity and peace that you have. Too many of our young men have been on the Jericho road of incarceration, and some are innocent and some are caught up, but the truth of the matter is that they are locked in a difficult place, and they have been cast aside, and yet somebody, I can't to tell you that black lives do matter because God is concerned about our young African American men who are caught on a Jericho road and shot innocently just because of the color of their skin. The Jericho road of suffering is those persons, are you still with me, who suffer in silence and scream out, somebody see my pain. Somebody See my pain. Did you not notice in this Good Samaritan story, Brother Roel, that we never hear from the victim? Did you not notice, brothers and sisters, that there is no voice, there is no scream? Because in my, my imagination, I see a silent scream of a man who was minding his business, who was coming from Jerusalem, the place of church. He was on his way from a retreat. He was on his way from the revival. He was on his way from church and on his way back home because he went to the wrong side of the town, the wrong neighborhood, the place called Jericho, that dark place where people were robbed. And did he was beaten and torn apart let me ask you a question that you've read the story that I asked myself why did God allow him praise God this is Pastor Young coming back to you again I hope that this message has been an inspiration to you if you'd like to purchase this message as previously stated you can reach me at 866 635-5505. You can also reach me at kyoung8429 at aol.com. And if you'd like to reach us by way of the website, 
GethsemaneFellowshipMinistries.org. I pray that this message has encouraged and inspired and given you hope today. And I also want you to tune in next week for another life-changing message. And bless the Lord. And remember, if God be for you, who can be against you? And God is on your side. God bless you today. Live and be victorious.